Hey YouTube people, it is Surface season again. We have in hand the Surface Pro 7 Plus with Tiger Lake, which has the new Intel uh, J graphics with a 96 execution units. Now, uh, in this video, we're gonna be covering uh, the throttling and performance characteristics of the uh, Pro 7 Plus uh, in contrast to the Surface Pro 7 original version and see what kind of performance gains they have made and also whether this new cooling solution that they have in here is uh, good enough to maintain the performance over long periods of time. But uh, we will be covering a lot of different topics regarding the Surface Pro 7 Plus. Uh, in the next few days, uh, we're going to look at it compared to the AMD uh, Radeon graphics solution that they have in their 4000 series mobile devices. And we're also going to be taking a look and I will show you how I'm going to be replacing and upgrading the SSD with a one terabyte version. This is a 256 original. And uh, if you want to get that content, be sure to subscribe and like, and be, you will get those videos uh, showing up in your feed. So anyways, without further ado, let's go look at the performance characteristics of the 7 Plus against the original Surface Pro 7. Okay, so uh, we're going to compare the Surface Pro 7 i7 version, 1065G7, this is Ice Lake, with the Surface Pro 7 Plus i7, which is the 1165G7 Tiger Lake. This has the J graphics, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, with 96 execution units, and this had 64 execution units on the Iris Pro graphics. Now, right off the bat, when we look at 3 Mark Time Spy, uh, we see we jump on the Surface Pro 7 to the Plus, we pick up a good 92% increase in performance. That's a highly graphical benchmark. Uh, so you can see they did a really good job on improving those graphics. Uh, that's almost a doubling in performance right there. Uh, in Geekbench 4 Multi-Core, we also saw improvements uh, going from the 7 to the Pro 7 Plus. Uh, we picked up about 8% there, going from 19,311 to 20,927. Uh, the single core performance actually went up more than the multi core, and I imagine that's because uh, it tends to uh, boost higher on that single core. Well, the multi core is more limited by the power limit. So, uh, anyways, we saw Geekbench 4 single a boost of 18.64% from 56.37 to 66.88. Now, Geekbench 5 Compute is also a graphic intensive or GPU intensive uh, operation. And we saw it go from 10,451 to 18,918, which is an 81% improvement on the Surface Pro 7 Plus. On Geekbench 5 Multi, a uh, slight uh, performance increase on Tiger Lake to 6.62%, and Geekbench 5 Single, actually, even though this graph is small, the, the difference between them, it actually was a 19.25% gain uh, for the Pro 7 Plus. Now, PC Mark 10 uh, actually went down, uh, and I think this could be due to the fact that uh, I think my Pro 7 that I tested on was a 512 gigabyte SSD and the uh, 11, the Pro 7 Plus uh, was a just a 256 gigabyte SSD. And it was in, it's that small, tiny SSD that's in the 2230 format. So uh, when I replace, I'm going to be replacing the, the drive with hopefully a better drive, and we'll see if that score comes up. But I think that could be due to uh, the SSD more than anything, but they're pretty equivalent. So uh, overall, uh, you're getting a little boost in performance, a very noticeable boost in performance moving from a Pro 7 to a Pro 7 Plus, but where you're really going to see those gains is on the graphical side of things. Uh, we're seeing almost a doubling of performance uh, on all the graphic intensive benchmarks that we look at, Time Spy and the Compute benchmarks there. Uh, looks really good on Tiger Lake. I'll be interested to see how it compares when we do uh, the comparison to the Ryzen 4000 mobile with uh, with Vega 8 and see how it compares there because it's going to be pretty competitive. Um, 
So anyways, uh, that was the performance. Let's move into the throttling characteristics and maybe you'll see uh, me pull out the famous fan that we always do on every launch of Surface. But let's take a look at that. Okay, so now that we've looked a little bit of the performance uh, benchmarks, let's take a look and see what the throttling performance looks like. Uh, that's uh, how much the performance is reduced uh, when a load is applied for a long period of time and the device gets hot. Now I like looking at this by using a program called Throttle Stop. And what this does is tell you what the package power is. And uh, the more watts your processor and graphics are using in this package, the more performance you're getting. Uh, so if you watch the watts, you can tell when it goes down, your performance is also going to go down. So I like to just look at that and see what, what type of performance we're getting. Now this chip, the 1165G7, should hit 28 watts. It will actually boost even more than that. But it should have a limit of 28 watts maximum, assuming the chassis of the device stays cool. But it doesn't. It, it, it gets hot and then it goes down to as low as 12 watts. Uh, so if we want to see what sustained uh, performance is for this type of device, uh, we're going to run just a, a benchmark here. And keep your eye on the package power down here, what it's pulling. So it's hitting 32 watts right now. Uh, it should, you know, peak and start coming down. Now the fan hasn't even turned on yet, which is good. So you can see it just power limited th throttle, and that means it's starting to heat up, and it says, whoa, that's getting a little too hot, uh, and I need to cool it off, and I'm going to lower the, the power consumption. But we are sitting at uh, 24, 25 watts. Now I'm just going to let this run its course, and I'll speed this up so we can see what happens. But basically, we're going to let this run for a long period of time and see how low the package power gets. Now the benchmark has ended, but it's still running in the background and it's still loading that. So that's that's totally fine. This is actually what we want because it's kind of just a static scene that isn't gonna, you know, bump the processor up and down. It's just gonna keep a solid load on the device. So we're still at uh, 25.2 watts. The fan has ramped up, and I'm gonna go silent and kind of wait for this thing to bottom out. Okay, so uh, I'm seeing it bottom out around uh, 14 and a half to 15 watts, and that's pretty much what we've seen on the Surface Pro 7 and the previous surfaces. Some of them, sometimes some of them went down to 12 watts occasionally, um, but the the 7 itself kind of bottomed out at this 14 to 15 range, and this one is no different on the 7 Plus. Uh, so it did. I did notice that it tended to uh, it took longer to get there. Uh, it, it dropped slower than I've seen other devices. It wasn't a hard crash, it was more gradual. So I think that's due to the fact that you have more battery mass that's it's able to, to absorb that heat, but it also has a... Uh, it seems to me like it's a better cooling solution, uh, which they said they upgraded that. Uh, so that is something. But now, of course, uh, we have to do what we always do, which is take our fan and point it at the back and see how much our power recovers. So I've plugged in this fan. I'm just going to place it back behind the device here, uh, pointed at the just where the CPU is. And we're going to watch and see how much performance we gain back. So the number to be watching is this watt area right here. It's already up to 16.4 watts. So it's moving quick. As I played with this, I've noticed the fan is very gradual. It comes in gradually and goes out gradually. I think that's an improvement over the previous uh, Surface Pro 7. Now this thing is completely redesigned on the inside. Uh, it's got a, a screen that's uh, thinner, which allowed them to pack more battery in here and also provide, I think, what looks to be a better cooling solution. It's already back at 18, 20 watts. So with that fan on, uh, we'll see where that tops out at, but 
just getting some airflow on the back of this device makes a huge difference for, for, for performance. I'll let this run for a minute and then we'll come back and we'll see how high the watts got to. Okay, so with the fan pointed at the back, uh, it tends to jump around between around 25 to 26, sometimes 27 watts. Uh, so it's really getting back up to, remember this, this uh, Tiger Lake processor is a 20, 28 watt version. And uh, with the fan on the back, you can maintain pretty close to that. I mean, it's not quite at 28, but very close to it. Um, which for something this light and portable is good. Um, now if you don't have a fan that you want to carry around with you like this, uh, you're more looking at the 15 watt performance uh, version. <laughs> Other than it boosts really high and, and bursty loads, it, it works just fine. But you can maintain uh, pretty much the full power of Tiger Lake on the Pro with a fan. So that's really encouraging. And uh, anyways, that's the throttling characteristics of the Surface Pro 7 Plus.